On-the-scene coverage of ACC14 is supported by Janssen Pharmaceuticals, Incorporated. I'm Peter Block for On the Scene here at the ACC annual meeting in Washington, D.C. The ACC and the AHA have released new guidelines for atrial fibrillation, and with me is Hugh Calkins, who's one of the pushers and drivers for the new guidelines. Hugh, the guidelines always change things a little bit, so I'm going to ask you at the front end, give me the big league changes, sort of the headline kind of changes that these guidelines bring out and then we're gonna go talk about the subtle things as well. So headline changes, what are the big changes? Well, I think number one, it's important to remember this is a complete rewrite of the 2006 document. So this is not minor tweaks, it's a big change. But if you were to ask what's the single most important change, it's incorporation of the CHADS VASC risk stratification system for stroke prevention. In the past, it was the CHADS risk score. Now it's CHADS VASC, which is far more sensitive. So it means that a lot more patients will be recommended to be anticoagulated. A lot of strokes will be prevented, and I think it's a major step forward. So the CHADS VASC ASCII is a lot more uh, sensitive in terms of what it can pick out for patients. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. It's much more, you know, you know there, there's many more parameters that are looked at. For example, you know, age over 65 gets you one point in CHADS of ASC. You only get a, a point in CHADS if you're over 75. So that's, you know, female gender gets you a point in CHADS of ASC. Vascular disease gets you a point. So it's a far more sensitive, you know, system, and it really takes the patients that would be CHADS zero and turns a lot of them into a sort of a higher stroke risk category because we incorporate these other risk factors. And I think it's incredibly important because we'll end up recommending anticoagulation for a lot more people that will prevent a lot of strokes and save lives. So it certainly casts a bigger net. That was my sense of that. Yeah. So let's go behind the scenes a little bit and tell me about the more subtle issues that these guidelines bring out. Well, I mean, we, we, well, there's a couple of subtle issues that I think are very interesting. One is the diagnosis of AFib. In the old guidelines, to be diagnosed with AFib, you need, needed two or more episodes. Everyone was given one episode and you weren't called an AFib patient. With the new guidelines, one episode, you're an AFib patient. So that's subtle, but I think very important. Uh, and then there's the other huge change in this document are the novel, all the new anticoagulant agents are now alternatives to Coumadin. So they've really been pushed up and aspirin has been really pushed down as a stroke prevention strategy. Okay, so let me see if I can put together a take home message that you agree with. Yeah. So the new guidelines cast a bigger net because we're using CHASVASC and anticoagulation, of course, therefore, is going to be used for a lot more patients. Diagnosis now is easier to make earlier, and certainly for the single AF patient. And what's the last thing you would say to sort of tack all this together? Oh, and the novel anticoagulants, the new anticoagulants are an alternative to Coumadin and aspirin you really shouldn't consider uh, for someone at significant risk of stroke who has atrial fibrillation. So there you have it for the new guidelines directly from the horse's mouth. Thank you very much, yeah. Hugh. Thanks, Peter.